Louis Pasteur. Louis Pasteur was one of the greatest scientists of all time. Pasteur made very important discoveries in biology and chemistry, and the techniques he developed helped greatly develop medical science and the agricultural and food industries. Pasteur was born in a small town in France during the year 1822. When he was a young man, Pasteur studied science at a university in the city of Paris. He soon did some excellent work in chemistry and later began his famous study of germs. Pasteur was one of the first scientists to understand that many diseases could be caused by extremely small invisible organisms. Only a few other scientists had believed this before, Pasteur. He advised doctors to wash their hands thoroughly before treating patients. Pasteur also demonstrated that life forms did not arise spontaneously. His research confirmed the idea, developed by previous scientists, that a living organism would not appear unless other individuals of its kind were present. One of Pasteur's most important contributions was a technique that has been named after him, pasteurization. Pasteurization kills the germs that are found in drinks, such as milk or beer. Because of Pasteur's technique, people are no longer infected with diseases by drinking these liquids. Just as important as pasteurization was a technique called immunization. Pasteur found that a person or animal could be made safe or immune from a disease by injecting the person with some weakened germs that cause the disease. The body can resist the disease after being immunized in this way. Today, many diseases are prevented by the use of this technique. Pasteur's discoveries also helped to save people who had already been infected with diseases. One such disease is rabies. Rabies is a disease that sometimes occur in animals. This disease usually kills the animal, but before dying, the animal becomes very aggressive and may spread the disease by biting a person or another animal. One day, the parents of a young boy came to Pasteur. Their son had been bitten by a dog that had the rabies disease. The parents knew that their son would die from the disease unless something could be done to save him. Pasteur agreed to help the boy, and the immunization technique saved the boy's life. Pasteur died in 1895. He was greatly admired around the world for his achievements, which have helped all of mankind. Today, Pasteur is considered to be the greatest figure in the history of medicine. Psychology Are you interested in the behavior of people and animals? If you are, then you might enjoy the study of psychology. Psychology is the study of behavior, but this is a very large area of study. There are several different branches of psychology, each of which studies a different aspect of behavior. Social psychologists study interactions among people. For example, a social psychologist might try to learn about the situations that cause people to behave aggressively. Another question studied by social psychologists is why certain people become attracted to each other. One of the interesting problems in social psychology is conformity. What causes people to behave in the same way and to follow what others do and say? Cognitive psychologists study thinking, memory, and language. One problem studied by cognitive psychologists is how people remember numbers. For example, what is the best way to memorize some numbers? Is it better to repeat the numbers to oneself or try to attach some meaning to these numbers? A cognitive psychologist might also study language. 
For example, why can young children learn a second language so quickly and easily? Cognitive psychologists are also interested in the ways that people learn to solve problems, such as finding a new place. Clinical psychologists study mental illnesses. For example, clinical psychologists might try to find out the causes of depression and to figure out ways of helping people who are depressed. Other clinical psychologists might study the behavior of people who suffer from addiction to drugs so that this problem can be prevented and treated. Another topic of interest to clinical psychologists is violent behavior. It is very important to find ways of preventing violence and to change the behavior of persons who act violently. Some psychologists are interested in the measurement of psychological characteristics. For example, psychologists might develop tests to assess a person's intelligence, personality traits, or interests. These tests can be used to help people make decisions about education, occupation, and clinical treatment. Psychologists who study the behavior of animals are called ethologists. Ethologists often go into the wilderness areas to watch the activity of birds, fish, or other animals. These psychologists try to figure out why it is that some animals have instincts for various behaviors, such as parenting, mating, or fighting. Some anthologists have learned very much about the unusual behaviors observed in many animals. These are only a few of the many areas of psychology. Truly, psychology is one of the most interesting areas of knowledge. Corruption When an official of a government or business is acting dishonestly, we say that this person is corrupt. Corruption is a serious problem in many countries around the world. There are several different kinds of corrupt practices, including bribes, kickbacks, nepotism, and embezzlement. A bribe is a payment of money or some other benefit in exchange for a decision that would not otherwise be made. For example, an accused criminal might bribe a judge so that the judge would make a decision of not guilty. Another example is that a business owner might bribe a government official so that the official would allow the construction of very unsafe buildings. A kickback is similar to a bribe, except that the official receives some part of the money in a dishonest business deal. For example, governments sometimes decide which company should build a road. A company might offer money to a government official who makes the decision, so that this company will be chosen, even if it's not the best company for the job. Nepotism happens when an official unfairly gives advantages to his or her relatives. For example, a government official might hire a brother or sister to do a job, even though other people would be much better qualified for that job. Of course, all of us want to help our relatives, but it is wrong to do this at the expense of the public. Embezzlement happens when an official secretly steals some money from a company or government. For example, a manager at a company might secretly move some of the company's money to his or her own bank account, and that manager might lie about his or her expenses in order to receive more payment from the company. Corruption has very bad effects on people in several ways. Sometimes it can lead to very dangerous situations. One example of this is when unsafe construction projects are approved by officials who have been bribed. Another example is when criminals are freed as a result of bribes. Also, a country's economy can be damaged by corruption. For example, if companies must pay bribes in order to do business, then they may decide to leave the country. Also, if people's tax money is stolen by corrupt officials, this makes the people poorer. In addition, when company officials are corrupt, it makes the company less able to compete with other companies. How can corruption be stopped? An important step is for each person to decide not to act in ways that are corrupt.
People must agree to take this problem seriously. Also, each company and each government must have strict rules about corruption. It must be very clear to all employees, from the lowest to the highest, that corruption is totally unacceptable. Canada, provinces and territories. Canada is one of the largest countries in the world. It is located in the northern half of the continent of North America, above the United States. Canada is divided into ten provinces and three territories, each of which is different from the others. The province of British Columbia is located at the far western end of Canada. British Columbia stretches from the Pacific Ocean at the west to the Rocky Mountains at the east. British Columbia contains the city of Vancouver, where two million people live. Most of the land of British Columbia is very mountainous, with vast forests covering the mountains. In British Columbia, forestry is an important industry, providing wood for people around the world. Moving east from British Columbia, the next provinces are Alberta, Saskatchewan, and Manitoba. These are known as the Prairie Provinces because they are mostly made of flat, grassy land called prairie. Alberta is the province where the flat prairie meets the tall, beautiful Rocky Mountains. In Alberta, there are many fields where oil and gas are found. And there are also many farms where cattle are raised. Saskatchewan is the province that grows the most wheat. Wheat from Saskatchewan is sent around the world to make bread and pasta for many people. Manitoba is the other prairie province. Its largest city, Winnipeg, is about halfway between the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans. Winnipeg has the coldest winters of any large city in the world, with temperatures sometimes reaching negative 40 degrees Celsius. Moving east, the next province is Ontario. The land in the northern part of Ontario is very rocky and contains many thousands and thousands of lakes. Many mines are found in northern Ontario. In the southern part of Ontario, there is good farmland, and there are also many cities where factories produce cars and steel. Ontario contains Canada's largest city, Toronto, as well as the capital city of Canada, Ottawa. In the southern part of Ontario are four of the largest lakes in the world, known as the Great Lakes. Next to Ontario is the province of Quebec. Unlike the other provinces where most people speak English, most of the people in Quebec speak French. The capital of Quebec is called Quebec City, and this is one of the oldest cities in North America. Quebec City contains many buildings that are hundreds of years old. Also in the province of Quebec is the city of Montreal. Of all the French-speaking cities in the world, only Paris is larger than Montreal. In the eastern part of Canada are the Atlantic provinces, which are next to the Atlantic Ocean. These provinces are New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, Prince Edward Island, and Newfoundland. In the Atlantic provinces, fishing is an important industry. Tourism is also important as many people come to see the beauty of these provinces. The people in these provinces are said to be the friendliest in Canada. In the far north of Canada are the three territories that lie beside the Arctic Ocean, Yukon, Northwest Territories, and Nunavik. Many of the people in these territories are the native people of Canada, known as the Indians and the Inuit. The northern areas have very cold, dark winters. The summer is short, but the days are very long and bright. 
two great artists, Leonardo and Michelangelo. Many people admire the paintings and sculptures that artists create. Some very beautiful paintings and sculptures were created by two men who lived in the same country at the same time. These men were Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo. They both lived in Italy around the year 1500. Leonardo da Vinci is most famous for his painting called the Mona Lisa. This is perhaps the best-known painting in the world. The Mona Lisa shows the head and shoulders of a dark-haired woman. When people look at this painting, they are often captivated by her smile and by her eyes, which have a look of mystery. Another painting of Leonardo's is called The Last Supper. This painting shows a famous scene from the Christian religion. In this painting, Jesus Christ is seated at the middle of a long table with his followers, the disciples, seated around him. Many of the paintings that were created at this time have a religious theme. Leonardo was not only an artist, he was also interested in engineering. He actually worked for some time as an advisor to a military leader helping him to develop new machines for use in war. Leonardo also made rough drawings of machines that are similar to those that were invented much later, such as submarines and helicopters. Obviously, Leonardo was an extremely creative man. Michelangelo was about 23 years younger than Leonardo. In addition, to being a painter, Michelangelo was also a sculptor, and many experts consider him the greatest sculptor of all time. One of his most famous sculptures is David, which is a statue of a young man who was a famous figure in the Bible. Another great sculpture of Michelangelo is called the Pida. The Pida shows Mary, mother of Jesus, holding the baby of her son across her lap. Michelangelo is also famous for painting the ceiling of a church known as the Sistine Chapel. The leader of the Roman Catholic Church, Pope Julius, asked Michelangelo to paint the ceiling of this new church. This project required many years of hard work, and the Pope complained that it took too long. However, when the work was finished, the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel was covered with beautiful paintings of many scenes from the Bible. Fortunately, many of the works of Leonardo and of Michelangelo can still be seen today in art galleries of Europe. During the past 500 years, the color of the paintings had faded somewhat, but in recent years, Some work has been done to restore the paintings to their original appearance. The Vikings About a thousand years ago, people known as the Vikings were known and feared throughout Europe. The Vikings were the people of the northern part of Europe called Scandinavia, which includes the modern countries of Denmark, Norway, and Sweden. The Vikings made their living by farming and fishing. However, by about the year 700, they began making attacks or raids upon towns along the coasts of Europe in order to steal the wealth of those towns. The Vikings made their attacks very quickly and without any warning. They were very cruel to the people of the towns they attacked, and they sometimes destroyed the towns by burning down the buildings. In some parts of Europe, the local kings would often fight against the Vikings. Sometimes, however, the kings would pay the Vikings in order to persuade them not to attack. Although the Vikings were known as fierce warriors, they also built excellent ships. The wooden Viking ships, called longboats, were able to sail even in very bad weather. 
Many Viking longboats were about twenty meters long, but some were nearly ninety meters long. The Viking sailors used both sails and oars to move their ships. The Vikings traveled across a large area. They made many of their attacks in Britain, France, and Germany, but sometimes sailed south into the Mediterranean Sea. Other Vikings moved to the east and then south, along the rivers of Russia. Some even went as far as the area that is now the country of Turkey. In some places, the Vikings decided to stay. Many Vikings settled in England and in France, and eventually they mixed with the local people. Other Vikings settled in Russia, and also mixed with the people there. The most famous travels of the Vikings were in the Atlantic Ocean. Vikings sailed westward to the island of Iceland, where many of them stayed. Today, the people of Iceland were descended from the Vikings. Some Vikings sailed further west to the cold island of Greenland. Vikings lived in Greenland for several generations, but eventually they died out. Some Vikings had gone even further west and reached the Canadian island of Newfoundland. The Vikings only stayed for a few years, but they had reached North America about five hundred years before Christopher Columbus. Gradually, the Vikings became converted to the Christian religion. They also stopped raiding the towns of Europe, and instead of fighting, they began trading with their neighbors. Today, the Scandinavian countries are known as very peace-loving nations. William Shakespeare. There has been many great writers in the history of English literature, but there is no doubt about which writer was the greatest. Many people consider William Shakespeare to have been the best writer who ever lived. William Shakespeare was born in the town of Stratford, England, in the year fifteen sixty-four. When he was a young man, Shakespeare moved to the city of London, where he began writing plays. His plays were soon very successful and were enjoyed both by common people of London and also by the rich and famous. In addition to his plays, Shakespeare wrote many short poems and a few long poems. Like his plays, these poems are still famous today. Shakespeare's most famous plays include Romeo and Juliet, Macbeth, Hamlet, King Lear, Othello, and Julius Caesar. Usually, Shakespeare did not invent the stories that he told in his plays. Instead, he wrote his plays using stories that already existed. However, Shakespeare's plays told these stories in a more interesting way than ever before. Some of the stories were tragedies, some were comedies, some described historical events. In his plays, Shakespeare revealed a very wide knowledge of many areas of life. The characters in his plays discuss many different topics, often with the knowledge of experts. But what is even more impressive about these plays is Shakespeare's use of the English language. His vocabulary was very large, and Shakespeare seemed to have introduced many words to the language. Also, many of the phrases that are said by Shakespeare's characters are now used in everyday conversation. Today, writers often use quotations from Shakespeare's plays in their own works. But perhaps even the most impressive features of Shakespeare's plays are the characters within them. The many characters in his plays seem very different from each other, but they seem very realistic. The emotions they feel, the words they say, and the actions they perform are all easily understood. Many people who watch one of Shakespeare's plays will find that they know people who remind them. Somewhat of the characters in those plays. Shakespeare died in the year 1619, but his writings are still popular today. 
four hundred years after they were written. The poems and plays were greatly admired by experts in literature, but also by people in general. Each year, hundreds of thousands of people enjoy attending performances of Shakespeare's plays. No other writer in the English language has remained so popular for such a long time. Ice hockey. One of the most popular sports in northern countries is the game of ice hockey. Each winter, this sport is played by hundreds of thousands of children and adults in North America and in Europe. Ice hockey is a fast and exciting game that can make winter much more enjoyable. The game of ice hockey is played on a flat surface of ice called a rink. The rink is about sixty meters long and about twenty-five or thirty meters wide. At any time, each team has six players on the ice. On their feet, the players wear skates whose thin metal blades allow fast movement along the ice surface. Learning to skate requires time and practice, but many people can skate very quickly and smoothly. In many ways, ice hockey is similar to soccer. However, unlike soccer, there is no large ball used in hockey. Instead, the players use a hard black rubber disc, which is called a puck. The players skate around the ice, trying to get the puck. They do not use their hands or feet to control the puck. Instead, they carry long wooden sticks, which are shaped in such a way that it is easy to push the puck along the ice. The players can pass the puck to each other by sliding it across the ice. To score a goal, a hockey player must shoot the puck into the net of the opposing team. But this is a difficult task. The net is less than two meters wide and is protected by a player called the goaltender. However, some players can shoot the puck very suddenly and with great power. Sometimes the sport of ice hockey can be quite rough. Players try to take the puck from their opponents by bumping into them at high speed. This is called a body check. Players are not allowed to hit each other with their sticks. If a player does this, then that player must be given a penalty by the referee, who enforces the rules of the game. Naturally, the sport of ice hockey is most popular in countries that have cold winters: Slovakia, the Czech Republic, and Germany. In addition, many people play hockey in the United States. In previous generations, ice hockey was considered a sport for men and boys only. However, in recent years, women and girls have been playing hockey much more frequently than in the past. Not only do many girls enjoy playing hockey for fun, but now women's hockey is officially a sport at the Winter Olympics. Chinese people in North America. In recent years, many people have moved to North America from China, but many people do not know that Chinese people have a long history in Canada and the United States. During the 19th century, both Canada and the United States were rapidly expanding to the west, toward the Pacific Ocean. In those days. There were, of course, no cars or airplanes to allow people and goods to move across the land. Instead, the best method of long-distance transportation was the railroad. Railway trains could move quickly across the countryside. However, there was one problem: before the railway trains could run, railroads had to be built across very long distances. To build the railroads was a very big job. Many men would be needed because the distance was so long and the land was so difficult, with many mountains and rivers to be crossed. For the men who owned the railroad companies, it would have been too expensive to hire Canadian or American men to build the railroads, because those workers would only work for high wages. The railroad owners decided to get workers from overseas. Many Chinese men were willing to work for low wages because they were very poor. These men would work very hard and send much of the money back to their relatives in China. 
thousands of Chinese men were brought to North America to work on the railroads. They did good work, but their employers treated them badly. The workday was very long, and working conditions were very unsafe. Many Chinese men died in accidents while constructing the railroads. Some Chinese women also came to North America, but there were many more men than women. After the railroads were completed, by about the year 1900, very few Chinese people were allowed to come to North America. Most people in Canada and the United States were not familiar with Chinese people, and did not want strangers to come to their countries. Any Chinese person who came to North America had to pay an expensive tax. This made it difficult for Chinese men to bring their wives and families to join them in North America. Later, the governments of Canada and the United States made Chinese immigration illegal. Eventually, the people of Canada and the United States realized that their laws had been unfair. They changed the rules so that Chinese people could immigrate in the same way the people from other countries could do so. In recent decades, many Chinese people have moved to North America, and have formed a very lively and successful community. Many cities, such as Toronto, Vancouver, San Francisco, and New York, have been enriched by Chinese culture. Chinese people are now very prominent in North America, just as they were many years ago. The history of the English language. Most people know that the English language is spoken by millions of people around the world. However, few people are aware of the history of the English language. Today, English is one language, but in some ways, it's a mixture of many different languages. The English language is most closely related to a group of languages called the Germanic languages. This group also includes languages such as German and Dutch. About fifteen hundred years ago, these languages were not yet distinct from each other. Some of the people of Germany and the Netherlands then moved to England. Those people were called the Anglo-Saxons, and their language then evolved into English. Most of the basic words of the English language are derived from these very old Anglo-Saxon languages. For example, words for the parts of the body, for numbers, and for animals are mostly Anglo-Saxon words. Some new words were brought to England over one thousand years ago by people who came from the Scandinavian countries of Northern Europe. Many words that begin with the letters S K, such as skin and skill. Are Scandinavian words. A major change happened in the English language after the year 1066. In that year, England was conquered by a king from the northern part of France. He and his followers spoke French, so French became an important language in England. During the next few hundred years, the English language absorbed a very large number of French words. In fact, today's English dictionaries contain more words of French origin than of Anglo-Saxon origin. Part of the reason why the English language has so many words is that it often has two words for each idea: one word of Anglo-Saxon origin and one word of French origin. Many more words entered the English language a few hundred years ago, when science and technology became more widespread. Most scientific and technical words are derived from words of the ancient languages of Latin and Greek. Because there are so many of these scientific and technical words in the English language today, the influence of Latin and Greek has been quite large. Other languages have also contributed many words to the English language. Some words have come from the Celtic languages spoken in Ireland, Scotland, and Wales. Many words have been added to the English language by immigrants who came to North America from various countries of Europe. Also, many more words have been adopted from the native languages of North America, Australia, and the Pacific, and from the languages of the peoples of Africa and Asia. All of these words have made English a very interesting language. 
African slavery in the Americas. One of the most tragic parts of the history of North and South America is the period of African slavery. For hundreds of years, many people were taken from Africa by force to work in the fields of many different countries in North and South America. When Europeans first came to the Americas, some of them realized that they might make money by growing crops and selling them in Europe. However, in order to make money, they would need a cheap source of labor. Few Europeans would come to the Americas to work for low wages, so instead, the landowners looked for slaves. In the areas of great farms or plantations, there were few Indians, so they used another source of slaves: Africa. The plantation owners usually obtained slaves by buying them from local kings in Western Africa. This led to many wars between rival kings within Africa, who tried to capture each other's people in order to sell them as slaves. A few kings tried to avoid the slave trade, but this was very difficult. During a period of several hundred years, from the 1500s to the 1800s, about 12 million people were taken from Western Africa to the Americas. Many more people died as slaves before leaving Africa, and many more died on the ships that took them to the Americas. This was because the conditions on the ships were extremely unhealthy. The ships were far too crowded, and there was little food and water. When the African slaves arrived in the Americas, the plantation owners made them work on farms that produced goods such as cotton and sugar. In many places, they worked very hard, and many of the slaves died from overwork. They were then replaced by other slaves who arrived from Africa. However, many slaves survived despite the brutal conditions. In some places, the African slaves were able to revolt against the plantation owners. However, this was difficult because the slaves who had recently arrived spoke many different languages. Some slaves escaped into wilderness areas and were able to remain free from the plantation owners. As time went by, many people in Europe and in the Americas realized that slavery was wrong. By the 1830s, slavery had been ended or abolished in islands owned by the British and in parts of the United States. In the southern United States, slavery was ended in the 1860s during the Civil War. In some countries, such as Brazil and Cuba, slavery only ended in the 1880s. Today, many millions of people in North and South America are descendants of slaves who were brought from Africa. The effects of slavery have lasted for many generations, and there was much racial prejudice against African people when slavery ended. However, some have achieved success despite these disadvantages. Today, the people of African background in North and South America are a very important part of the population in many countries. Worries about physical appearance. Most people would like to have an attractive physical appearance, but some people become very worried about the way they look. This can sometimes lead them to do things that are unhealthy. For example, many women believe that they must be very thin in order to be attractive. They see pictures of fashion models who are very thin and then believe that an attractive woman must look the same way. However, many men prefer the appearance of women who are not so thin. In order to become thin, some women try to reduce the amount of food that they eat. When this is taken to an extreme, a woman might eat far too little food to remain healthy. Her weight may become dangerously low as she tries to become thinner and thinner. This condition is called anorexia, and it affects many thousands of women in Western countries. Anorexia is one of several conditions known as eating disorders. Another eating disorder is called bulimia. A woman who has bulimia will sometimes eat large amounts of food, but then will try to eliminate the food by vomiting. This is intended to prevent any weight gain, but it is also a very unhealthy behavior. Unfortunately, some women are concerned about being very thin, but some women have different concerns related to the appearance of their body. For example, some women believe that their breasts are not large enough. 
and will undergo surgery to enlarge their breasts. In this surgery, some artificial substance is implanted inside the breast to make it larger. Many women have had this surgery, but many of them have suffered serious health problems as a result. In recent years, many men have also become very concerned about their physical appearance. For example, some men believe that they must become very muscular in order to have an attractive appearance. To achieve this appearance, some men use drugs called steroids, which make it possible to gain large amounts of muscle. However, steroids can have very unhealthy side effects. In addition to drugs, some men have used surgery to change their physical appearance. For example, some men have had implants to make their arms, legs, or chest appear larger. It is unfortunate that so many people feel so unhappy about their physical appearance, and that they do unhealthy things to change the way they look. Of course, everyone should try to be healthy, but people must also learn to accept their physical appearance. Many different body types can be attractive, but there is no single ideal body type. There is no need to use unnatural methods of changing one's body. Physical fitness. In modern society, many people find that they do not get very much exercise. They travel by bus, train, or car, and they can move up or down in elevators. They have machines that do most of the heavy work that was once done by people. However, exercise is important for staying healthy. A person who exercises. Frequently, will be physically fit. There are different aspects of physical fitness. One important element of being physically fit is called cardiovascular fitness. The word cardiovascular refers to the heart and lungs. If one's heart and lungs are in good condition, then one can exercise at a steady pace without soon getting tired. To develop cardiovascular fitness, it is important to perform some exercise that makes one's heart beat quickly. For example, a person can improve cardiovascular fitness by riding a bicycle, by running, by swimming, by rowing, or even by walking quickly. Some people go to special places called health clubs or gyms. Where they can use different exercise machines to develop their cardiovascular fitness, but many people improve their cardiovascular fitness by playing recreational sports such as tennis or soccer, or by dancing vigorously. By having good cardiovascular fitness, one is less likely to suffer from heart disease. Of course, there is one way to improve cardiovascular fitness that does not involve exercise. Stop smoking. Another important aspect of physical fitness is called flexibility. Flexibility refers to one's ability to stretch comfortably. For example, a healthy person should be able to touch his or her toes without bending the legs. People can perform various stretching exercises to improve flexibility by being flexible. A person can avoid injuries that might otherwise affect their body. Yet another important aspect of physical fitness is the strength and endurance of one's muscles. Many people suffer from injuries that result in part from weakness of the muscles. Muscular strength and endurance can be improved by a variety of exercises. Some of these exercises involve lifting a weight. But other exercises simply involve pushing or pulling against the weight of one's own body. One example is an exercise called the push-up. In this exercise, a person lies on the floor with the face pointing down. The person bends his or her arms so that the palms of the hands are on the floor next to the shoulders. The person then pushes with his or her arms. Lifting the upper part of the body above the ground until the arms are straight. 
Before starting to do any exercises, it is a good idea to have a medical checkup. Some people do not want to exercise because they think it will be too much work. However, many people find that they feel very good when they exercise. Exercising can be an enjoyable and fun way to maintain health and fitness. The History of Trial by Jury In most English-speaking countries, a person who is accused of a crime has the right to a trial by jury. In a trial by jury, the guilt or innocence of the accused person is decided by a group of 12 people called jurors who must listen to the evidence about the case. The idea of a trial by jury is over 800 years old, but there was a time when criminal cases were decided in other ways. Today, many of these methods seem ridiculous and cruel. Many accused people were forced to undergo a trial by ordeal. There were several different kinds of this trial. For example, in the ordeal by fire, an accused man was forced to carry a red-hot piece of iron in his hand. People believed that if the man were innocent, then the gods would protect him, and his hand would not be burned or blistered by the iron. Another form of the trial by ordeal was the ordeal by combat. If one person accused another of a crime, they would be forced to fight each other with some weapon. People believed that the gods would help the man who was right and allow him to win the fight. Yet another kind of ordeal was the ordeal by water. If a woman was accused of a crime, such as witchcraft, she might be thrown into a river with rocks attached to her. People believed that the gods would help an innocent woman and allow her to float on the water. Gradually, people realized that the trial by ordeal was a completely worthless way to judge a person's innocence or guilt. They wanted a less barbaric way to decide criminal cases. During the 12th century, a new method was introduced by one of the kings of England, Henry II. Henry said that criminal cases should be decided by the opinions of twelve honest men who knew about the crime, the victim, and the accused person. This was the beginning of trial by jury in English-speaking countries, and the method soon became very popular. People trusted this new method much more than they trusted the old methods. Later, the system of trial by jury changed somewhat. Instead of having a jury of 12 men and women who knew about the crime, juries were chosen so that the 12 people did not know anything about the crime. This change ensures that the jurors do not have any bias or prejudice about the case. When jurors do not know any of the people involved in the case, their decisions are more likely to be fair and accurate. Today, Citizens in many countries are called occasionally for jury duty. This can be inconvenient for people who are busy with their work and family life. However, many men and women are willing to serve on juries because of a feeling of responsibility to society. The use of juries in criminal cases helps to ensure that justice is done. Benjamin Franklin Benjamin Franklin was one of the most famous people in American history. He was never a president of the United States, but he made great achievements in many areas of life, including business, literature, science, and politics. Benjamin Franklin was born in the city of Boston during the year 1706. In his early years, Franklin was very poor. As a young man, he worked for his older brother, who was a printer. However, the two brothers soon argued with each other. Benjamin decided to leave, and he moved to the city of Philadelphia. He worked very hard and soon became a successful printer. He published his own newspapers, and he also published books called Almanacs, which contained many wise sayings. Many of the wise sayings in Franklin's almanacs are still repeated today. 
Franklin's printing business was very successful, but he was also very interested in science. He performed experiments on the topic of electricity. Some of these experiments were very dangerous. In one experiment, Franklin was almost killed when he went outside during a lightning storm and flew a kite that had a metal key attached. However, Franklin was lucky enough to avoid injury, and he learned new facts about electricity. In addition to scientific research, Franklin was also an inventor. He invented a new kind of eyeglasses called bifocals. Bifocals are eyeglasses that allow people to see things that are far away, but also allow them to read things that are very close. Another invention was a new kind of stove for burning wood. This new stove was much more efficient than the older stoves had been. He also invented a lightning rod, which keeps houses safe from lightning. Franklin was also interested in making his city a better place to live. He started a public library, and he helped to organize a hospital and a fire department. In addition, he supervised the postal service, which operated profitably under his command. In his later years, Franklin became heavily involved in politics. For most of Franklin's life, the United States was not yet a country. Instead, the United States were still colonies of England, but Franklin encouraged other Americans to become an independent country. When the United States became a country, Franklin became the American ambassador to France. The French people liked Franklin very much. Franklin later returned to the United States, and he died in 1790. Today. Many Americans still admire the brilliant achievements of Benjamin Franklin, who did so much to improve people's lives. The picture of Benjamin Franklin can be seen on the American hundred-dollar bill. Preservation of forests. Many thousands of years ago, much of the world's land area was covered in forests. Since that time. People have needed to clear the forests by cutting down the trees in order to make room for their farms and cities. Today, forests are still being cleared, and many people are worried that too much forest area is being lost. There are many reasons why it is important to preserve forests. One reason is that the trees inside the forests. Help to remove carbon dioxide from the air and put oxygen back into the air. This is important because scientists believe that too much carbon dioxide in the air might be causing the world's temperature to increase quickly. The forests might help to reduce this problem by absorbing carbon dioxide from the air. Another reason for preserving forests. Is to maintain many different species of plants and animals. The forests are the home of a huge variety of plants and animals, which will become extinct if the forests are destroyed. These plants and animals are both beautiful and interesting, but they also have practical benefits for people. For example, doctors believe that many diseases might be treated by chemicals that are obtained from forest plants. Forests are also important for providing wood or lumber, but sometimes people cut down too many trees for lumber. To preserve the forests, it is important to ensure that the amount of wood removed is not more than the amount of new wood that grows in the forest. Otherwise, the forest will gradually disappear. In many parts of the world, forests have already been cleared. In recent years. Many forests have been cleared in South America, Africa, and Southeast Asia. In other parts of the world, the forests have already been cleared a long time ago. There are only a few areas of the world where very large areas of forests have not yet been changed by people. These areas include the Amazon rainforest of Brazil and the northern forests of Canada, Alaska, and Siberia.
Some countries have passed laws to protect their forests from being cleared. For example, a country can declare its forest areas to be a national park and prevent the forest from being cut down. However, this is very difficult for poor countries to do. The people may want to cut down the forest to obtain wood, to gain access to natural resources in the forest areas, or to have new land for farming. When forests are cut down to gain new farmland, however, people usually find that the soil is not very good for farming. It is a difficult challenge to provide opportunities for poor people of the countries and to protect the forests at the same time. However, it is very important that this challenge be met successfully because the forests will be needed by future generations of people. True or false? 1. Preservation of forests is important because the trees remove carbon dioxide from the air and replace it with oxygen. 2. Plants and animals should be preserved because they are beautiful and beneficial to people. 3. Cleared forest land is often excellent for farming. 4. People have been clearing the Amazon rainforest for years. Violence on Television Nowadays, the issue of violence on television is often debated. Many people are concerned that the images of violent acts might cause the viewers to become more aggressive. Some of these people believe that there should be restrictions on violent television programs. Other people feel that individuals should be able to choose what they want to watch on TV. Many of these people believe that violent television is unlikely to affect people's behavior. One of the concerns that some people have about violent TV is that the viewers might imitate aggressive acts. For example, consider a TV program that shows professional wrestlers. Some people believe that children who watch the program might copy the actions of the wrestlers and that this could lead to serious injuries. As another example, consider a TV program that shows people shooting guns at each other. Some people believe that viewers of such a program might be more likely to use a gun in their disputes with others. Another concern that some people have with violent TV is that it might make people less sensitive to the effects of violence. In other words, people who watch many acts of violence on television might no longer be shocked by violent acts. They might then become quite tolerant of the use of violence. Some people do not believe that violence on television is likely to have harmful effects. They point out that many terrible acts of violence occurred long before television. They also argue that people can tell the difference between television and real life. That is, they say that people are unlikely to imitate violent acts and are unlikely to become less sensitive to violence in real life. Also, they argue that parents are able to prevent their children from watching violent television. Psychologists have conducted some research studies on the effects of violent television. Some studies have shown that children who watch a lot of violent TV do become slightly more aggressive as adults. Other studies have found that people behave somewhat more aggressively after watching a violent program. This is especially true for people who have an aggressive personality. Finally, some other research has found that rates of murder tend to increase slightly in the days following a televised boxing match. Nearly all psychologists now agree that violence on television does contribute to aggressive behavior in everyday life. The issue of violence on television is difficult because it is a conflict between public safety and individual freedom. Some people feel that violent TV should be restricted because it might have harmful effects on society. But other people feel that individuals should be free to watch the programs that they like. The Inuit 
Not many people would want to live in the Arctic areas of northern Canada, Alaska, and Greenland. In these places, the summers are very short, and the winters are extremely cold and dark. However, there are some people who have made this land their home for many generations. These people are called the Inuit. The word Inuit means person in the language of the Inuit, which is called Inuktitut. Before modern times, the Inuit had to survive by hunting. Because their homeland was in such a cold northern place, the Inuit could not make a living by farming or by gathering plants. Many of the animals that the Inuit hunted are mammals that live in the water. For example, the Inuit used boats to hunt whales. Also, they hunted seals by waiting for the seals to rise to the surface of the water. Sometimes. The Inuit would hunt land mammals such as polar bears. When eating the meat of the animals that they hunted, the Inuit often ate the meat raw. This was necessary because only raw meat could provide them with enough nutrients to survive in a place where fruits and vegetables were not available. In previous times, the Inuit were known as the Eskimos. Which means people who eat raw meat. However, the Inuit did not like this name. The Inuit invented many useful tools for surviving in the cold northern areas. They sewed warm clothing from the furs and skins of the animals they hunted. For transportation, they used dogs, which could pull them in sleds across the snow. For making heat and light. They used lamps that burned the fat and oil of whales. The Inuit were famous for their houses made of snow, which were called igloos. The igloos were made by cutting blocks of snow and then using these blocks to build a small, round-shaped house. People could enter or exit the igloo through a narrow tunnel. In recent decades. The Inuit have had much contact with the modern world. Inuit children now attend schools, and Inuit adults work at a variety of occupations. In some ways, the Inuit have found it difficult to adjust to the changes from their traditional ways, but the Inuit are meeting this challenge. In Canada, there is a new territory in the far north called Nunavut, where most of the people, including the leaders, Are Inuit. The Inuit are famous for their beautiful artwork. In particular, Inuit carvings or sculptures are known for their excellent quality. These carvings, which nowadays are made from a kind of stone called soapstone, depict people or animals such as bears, seals, or whales. In addition to paintings. Inuit artists have produced beautiful sketches and paintings of northern scenes. Kings and queens of England. Today, in the early 21st century, most countries no longer have kings and queens. However, some countries have remained as monarchies, including England and its former colonies. However, even in these countries. The monarch is a ceremonial figure who no longer has any real power over his or her subjects. These countries are called constitutional monarchies because they are democracies in which the monarch remains the official head of state. Many years ago, the kings and queens of England did have real power, but gradually this power was transferred to the people and their elected officials. It is interesting to examine how this transition occurred. Even in very early times, the King of England did not have absolute power. He was the most powerful man in the country, but he could not entirely force his will upon others. If he became too demanding, he might face opposition from powerful local landowners. These men, called the barons. Might resist a king who tried to become too strong. This is exactly what happened in the year 
the king of England had made many unreasonable demands upon the country, and the barons decided to resist. They forced the king to agree to a list of rules that would limit his power. These rules were written in a famous document called the Magna Carta. This document described not only the rights of the barons, but also of the common people of England. During the next few hundred years, the kings still had much power. However, some other people, such as the landowners and the richer men of the towns, also had influence. Their meetings became known as parliaments, and the king had to share power with the parliament. During the 1640s, one king tried to rule without parliament and tried to take away the rights of parliament. This led to a civil war, and the king was defeated. England soon became a monarchy again, but it became clear that parliament would have more power than the king. Until the 20th century, the parliaments of England became more democratic as more and more people were allowed to vote. Today, England still has a constitutional monarchy, but not all English-speaking countries recognize the English Queen. For example, the United States became an independent country over 200 years ago and has become a republic ever since. In some countries, there is a debate about the future of the monarchy. Canada, Australia, and New Zealand still recognize the Queen of England as their own queen, even though those countries are no longer governed by England. Many people in those countries want to abolish the monarchy. They believe that their countries should now have their own head of state. On the other hand, some people in those countries want to keep the monarchy because it reminds them of their country's early history. This is an ongoing topic of debate for Canadians, Australians, and New Zealanders. Alcohol Alcohol is the oldest drug that is used in Western countries. For thousands of years, people have made alcoholic beverages. These beverages are made by allowing a process called fermentation to occur. Alcoholic fermentation happens when yeasts or bacteria break down the sugars that occur in some liquids and convert some sugars into alcohol. Many liquids, such as fruit juices, can ferment. Thousands of years ago, alcoholic drinks were common in the Middle East. However, the Islamic religion forbids alcohol, so very little alcohol is consumed in this part of the world. In European countries and in other parts of the world, many different kinds of alcoholic beverages are produced and consumed. In warmer areas of Europe, people make wine by allowing grape juice to ferment. In cooler areas of Europe, people make beer by fermenting liquids made from water and various grains. The process of fermentation is also used to make stronger drinks known as spirits. These drinks include vodka, whiskey, and rum. The techniques for making good wine, beer, and spirits have been developed over hundreds of years and require scientific precision. Some people have developed a great appreciation for well-made wine, beer, or spirits and have become experts about the many different varieties of these beverages. Many people appreciate the taste of alcoholic beverages, but many also enjoy the feelings that alcohol causes. Alcohol belongs to a category of drugs called depressants because it depresses the central nervous system, causing a person to feel less inhibited or restrained. Many people enjoy this feeling, but when a person drinks a lot of alcohol, he or she loses coordination, balance, and judgment. Speech may become unclear, and the person may speak too much. Some people become aggressive or depressed. When a person is under the influence of alcohol, the person is said to be drunk. One of the problems that can result from alcohol consumption is known as drunk driving. Some people try to drive a car after having consumed alcohol, but this is extremely dangerous. Each year, thousands of people are killed by drunk drivers who lose control of their cars. 
In recent years, attempts have been made to reduce this problem by public education campaigns and by strict laws and punishments. If you drink, don't drive. Another problem associated with alcohol is addiction, and it's known as alcoholism. Some people drink so frequently that they develop a psychological addiction to alcohol. This problem can have terrible consequences for a person's health, personal relationships, and career. Alcoholic beverages are firmly a part of Western culture and of many other cultures also. On one hand, drinks provide many people with much enjoyment and appreciation. On the other hand, alcohol is a drug that can be abused, leading to accidents and addiction. The origins of Canada and the United States. Most people are aware that Canada and the United States are two very large countries in North America. However, most people do not know how these countries came to exist. The story of the creation of these countries is a very interesting one. During the 17th and 18th centuries, some people from England and from France moved across the Atlantic Ocean. English people lived on what is now the east coast of the United States, and French people lived in what is now Quebec, in the eastern part of Canada. The kings of England and France were often at war with each other. This meant that there was often fighting in North America between the soldiers of England and France. By about the year 1750, there were many more people in the English colonies than in the French colonies. When the next war began, the English king was determined to defeat the French and gain complete control of North America. The English assembled a large force of ships and soldiers and attacked the French at Quebec. The French fought bravely, but they were too few in numbers, and the English won the war. England then gained control of all of North America. After this war, the people of the English colonies in North America began to feel dissatisfied with their government. They were not represented in the English government, but they had to pay taxes to the English king. The taxes were used to pay for English soldiers who defended the American colonies, but the Americans did not want these soldiers. In 1775, the American settlers began to rebel, and in 1776, the Americans declared their independence. For several years, there was much fighting between the Americans and the English soldiers. For a while, it appeared that the Americans would lose, even though they fought bravely. Then, the King of France decided to help the Americans. He sent his ships and soldiers to America, and they helped the Americans to defeat the English forces. England recognized the United States of America as an independent country in 1783. However, England kept control of Canada. When the American colonies rebelled against England, some of the people who lived in those colonies did not rebel. Those people were called loyalists. Because they were loyal to the king, when the war ended, the loyalists had to leave the country. They moved northward to Canada, where they started new English-speaking colonies. During the year 1812, the Americans invaded Canada, but they were not able to conquer the country. During the 19th century, the people of Quebec continued to speak French and to maintain their French culture. Meanwhile, many more people moved to the English-speaking areas of Canada. In the year 1867, Quebec and the English-speaking colonies agreed to form a single country, Canada. By this time, there were two very large countries in the northern part of North America. Hawaii. Of the 50 states in the United States. Forty-nine are located on the mainland of North America. The other state is Hawaii, which consists of several islands in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Hawaii is known as an especially beautiful and interesting place. The Hawaiian Islands were formed by volcanic eruptions that pushed molten rock called lava 
above the surface of the ocean. Some of the islands no longer have any volcanic activity, but there are still active volcanoes on two Hawaiian islands, Oahu and the Big Island, which is known simply as Hawaii. One of these volcanoes, Mauna Loa, still erupts sometimes with spectacular explosions of lava. Another volcano, called Mauna Kea, is now dormant. These volcanoes are both very tall and reach over 4,000 meters above sea level. The air above Mauna Kea is so clear and thin that scientists use the mountain as a base for observing the stars. The islands of Hawaii are located in the tropics, and they are known for their beautiful weather. The temperatures are usually in the range of 20 to 30 degrees Celsius, and the days are usually sunny. This weather allows people to enjoy swimming and surfing on the beautiful beaches of Hawaii. Despite the sunshine, most of the islands also receive enough rainfall to support many beautiful flowers and trees. The first people to live in Hawaii were Polynesian groups who arrived from other islands in the Pacific well over 1,000 years ago. The islands were visited by European explorers during the late 18th century. During the early 19th century, the islands became unified under a single king. However, during this time, many Hawaiians died from diseases that were brought by European and American visitors. The Hawaiian islands are excellent places for growing sugarcane and pineapples. In the late 18th century, some Americans began large farms called plantations in Hawaii. The Americans eventually gained control of the government, and Hawaii became a territory of the United States. The United States built a naval base on the island of Oahu at Pearl Harbor. This base was attacked by Japan in 1941, but it was soon repaired. The naval base is still in use today. During the 19th and 20th centuries, there were great demand for labor on the sugar and pineapple plantations. People came to Hawaii from many lands, and Hawaii became a place of many cultures. The native Hawaiians mixed with people from places such as Japan, China, Korea, the Philippines, Portugal, and Puerto Rico as well as the mainland United States. Today, many Hawaiians can claim a diverse heritage. In 1959, Hawaii became the 50th state of the United States, with the city of Honolulu as its capital. Today, there are more than one million people in Hawaii, more than half of whom live in Honolulu. Each year, many more people visit Hawaii as tourists to experience the beauty of these islands. islands. Charles Darwin Charles Darwin made what might be the most important scientific discovery of all time, the theory of evolution by natural selection. It was Darwin who first understood how it was that plants and animals evolved over time to produce new and different species. At first, this theory faced much opposition, but since that time, it has been supported by evidence from many areas of science. Darwin was born in a small town in England in 1809. When he was a young man, he went to university, first to study medicine, and later to study religion. However, Darwin found his schoolwork to be very boring. Instead, he preferred outdoor activities and was very interested in nature. While Darwin was at university, the British Navy was planning to send one of its ships, called the Beagle, on a voyage of exploration. As part of this voyage, the ship would need a naturalist who could study the various plants and animals that might be found. Darwin was recommended for this job by one of his professors, who had been impressed by Darwin. Darwin was chosen as the naturalist of the Beagle, and the ship left England in 1831. 
The ship's voyage took Darwin around the world, and he observed many species of plants and animals on his trip. In one place near South America, known as the Galapagos Islands, Darwin observed many unusual species of birds. Several of these birds seemed closely related to each other, but they differed in interesting ways. For example, some birds had long beaks that could reach insects hidden in the bark of trees, but other birds had thick beaks that could break open the shells of nuts. What Darwin realized was that certain characteristics could help an animal or a plant to survive and reproduce. Individuals that lacked those characteristics would become more likely to die without reproducing. Over many generations, the useful characteristics would then become more and more common as the surviving individuals passed the characteristics on to their offspring. Eventually, after many generations, the changes would be so great that a new species would exist. In this way, a single species could divide into two or more new ones. This was called the process of evolution by natural selection. When Darwin returned to England, he studied plants and animals in more detail. After much research, he began writing a book about his theory of evolution by natural selection. When the book The Origin of Species was published in 1859, it was very popular and very controversial. During the next 20 years, Darwin continued his scientific research, and he wrote several more books. By the time of his death in 1882, many biologists had realized that Darwin had made one of the most important scientific discoveries of all time. For the first time, scientists could understand the origin of the many different species of plants and animals.